you know what day it is it's wednesday you know what happens about this time we get together we talk about shower doors and stuff like that and if uh if you're out there listening to this uh, on youtube or on one of the streaming platforms and you've never joined us on this call what's up you should come and join us on this call <laughs> there's um the link's posted there in the Facebook groups. Just click on that and it'll uh, just direct you right on into here. And uh, yeah, last week, I, I don't know, we had like, how many do we have? We had, we're getting 17. close to 20 people. Right it's 17. Seven, yeah, 17 or 18. I think we had 18 at one point. Did we? Yeah, I think so. And then I don't know who was that dropped off, but it's yeah, yeah, I, count, I was 18. I, I showed up for like five minutes just to get the uh, count of 18. There it is. There's there's number 18 right there. You're looking at him. So when I said 17, I meant legitimate. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. No doubles, you know. No double double connections out there. Well, cool. Hey, you know, I uh Bill had an, an idea for, for a topic. Bill's good for that. He's good at coming up with ideas. Try and help out wherever I can, Chris. That's why he's the man. We were talking a little bit about what are some of the most common issues that you run into, or better yet, things that are easily um, overlooked. Um, you know, what are things that in the layouts is you know part of the of the process when you're measuring for a shower enclosure. What are the little things that are easy to miss that uh, cause you problems later on? Can I'll, I jump in? I'll start since I had one from earlier today, which was Perfect. a uh, knee wall panel that uh, the outage was a bow in the wall and it wasn't accounted for. And so the glass stuck out over the, uh, the knee wall by about three sixteenths of an inch. Hmm. Not going to happen. So let me ask you, does your estimator also install? Uh, he helps me on just about every install, yeah. He wasn't on this one because it was just a small knee wall panel. But he was the estimator on it. And yeah. does, does he draw paperwork on every estimate? Did he, did he show the bow in the wall? No. I, he, the showed a, uh, he showed a, a one-eighth inch outage that he thought was going to take care of it. But I'm like, no, it's, <laughs> you got to do the bow. You got to do an elbow. Did you have the glass cut out of square at the one eighth? It was cut out of square to one eighth, but it wasn't yeah. going to work. Right. Okay. Yeah. No, there was definitely uh, about a, a good eighth or three sixteenths at the top and at the bottom yeah. uh, against the wall. So it happens. So what are you going to, are you remaking a panel three sixteenths less and you're going to caulk that or are you going to have them do some kind of a shape cut like a banana cut to that panel? Unfortunately, uh, I'm going to have them take three sixteenths off of the outside edge because I, because I forgot to measure where the bow was, where the elbow <laughs> uh, was going to be. Uh, it was uh, so, been a long day. <laughs> no excuse. I messed up, but it happens. Uh, I'll just, it happens. I'll just deal with it. Yeah. It does. Yeah, that's a perfect. So mistake example. on top of mistake, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, that's a perfect example of what I'm talking about. Things that are just that are easy to uh, to overlook, you know. And the installation I did today it sounds a lot like the one I did. I mean, uh, both both walls were just like bowed. Um, and what happens a lot of time is the tile guy should set that first course of tiles. Um, and just let them really set up before they start running the rest of them. Because what happens is if, if the bottom row of tiles isn't set up and they start stacking tiles on top, the bottom ones do that, right? Mm. They come in at the bottom and then you get that where it comes straight down and it just kicks in at the very bottom. And um, it looks terrible. I mean, and like, unless you, you know, bring cardboard or something out to cut patterns you know for for your shower doors i mean I, I know most people aren't doing that you're just uh you know you're getting that dimension at the bottom you know you're getting the dimension at the top and cutting straight lines 
but uh, that's something that I see quite a bit. We had one, I'll tell you what's something we've been struggling with a little bit. We did a door, uh, it was yesterday. So it was a rolling door, fixed panel. Obviously the door is operational. The only requirement from the customer was that it was handicapped. So there was no channel under the door. We all got that. They showed us a door. It was a Basco roll air door that they wanted. What they didn't see is that there was channel on that fixed stationary panel and up the wall. It must have been a brush nickel finish or whatever. <clears throat> That's what we ordered. During the installation process, when he saw that channel go down, he wigged out, um, lost his mind, didn't want channel, actually didn't want anything. No clips, no clamps. He said, I want a frameless glass enclosure. And, you know, so we're, we're working through, uh, we talked him through some of the structural uh, um, considerations you need to take about that fixed panel being secured. But what I'm finding more and more is I see, you know, you, I, there are a lot of people post pictures online, a lot of, you know, minimal hardware. I respect that. I think it's good. But I think there's a lot of situations where you have, in, in my opinion, you have structural issues that you have to deal with. And customers don't want to hear that. I'd be curious to ask you guys hear that. I mean, I'm hearing this no channel, no clips. They want to see basically structural silicones that are su supporting this glass. And I'm just not a big fan of it in, in a lot of cases. You know, I got, a, I got an engineering background and, and I look at this stuff from a structural standpoint. And yeah, those clipless, channelless enclosures look really cool. But when I'm standing there thinking at some point, you know, is it safe? Is it structurally sound? So we had uh, just curious how you all deal with that. Well, not... I want to add to that too, Moz, because you'll go on manufacturers websites and some of those things and they they're absolute liars. They won't show. They'll give you pictures that don't show the bottom or there will be like this big panel and they won't show the support bar. You read the installation guide and it says, oh yeah, there's gonna be this giant black support bar that the customer is gonna hate. They don't help you out, they're absolute liars. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think after a certain number of showers, you the customers are gonna trust what, what what you recommend. And, and at the end of the day, you're going to be liable there. If, if, if they push you to do something that you don't think is safe and then a problem occurs a year later, they aren't going to go, yeah, my bad. I pushed him to do something that was unsafe. They're going to say, you were the professional. You should have told us. And as far as the customer with the channel, are you walking through all the hardware uh, at the end of each uh, measure that we have with our clients? It's okay. There'll be two hinges over here. There'll be a handle here. There'll be channel along the bottom. There'll be a header bar, no header bar. And they'll be clipped. And then, of course, we follow up with a drawing that shows everything so that there's no surprises. Those are that's those are great questions. And I appreciate that. So I have several people that measure uh, and we're in the process of, you know, you learn from your mistakes. When I measure our portfolio of pictures that we post on our website covers pretty much every configuration that you see out there. And I don't say that in a bragging way, but we've been doing it for about 17 years. And so what I do is not only pictures, not only a, a literal walkthrough while I'm standing there in front of them, but I bring up something that's similar or identical in nature. Now, I don't know whether my guy did that, but when you look at these brochures that they presented to us, um, just like Shannon was saying, you can't see the U channel. They didn't see the U channel. I can see it. I know what to look for, but these, bro yeah. these I think they're misleading. And I agree with you that you have to err on the side of what's right. Um, I'd rather walk away than put somebody at risk, but it's just something that we have to clean up on our end. I recognize that, that and get everybody on the same page in the sense that there's, you're either going to get in channels or you're going to get clamps. And in most cases, um, I even carry pieces of U channel with me and I lay it on the curb or the wall. And so this is the profile you're looking at. So um, just kind of curious if you guys have gotten into that pickle also. We just refuse to do it. If it's, you know, I've seen a couple of pictures online that show, you know, just silicone everywhere. And maybe these guys are really good at it. But for our case, we just, we have no interest in putting ourselves in that situation. Maybe we'll learn something from somebody who's done it without all that hardware. But for us at the end of the day, 
I want to make sure that we're protected as much as possible. So we just, if somebody says absolutely no hardware, nothing silicone, duh, we've all seen those jobs when we walk in and there's an issue. So we just, we just won't do them. Yeah, that's right. And the fact is that when the lawyer calls, nobody's going to remember that conversation. Nope. All right. What a lot of these customers don't understand is that you want to hold something in place with silicone, but eventually that silicone is going to mold and that's going to look terrible, worse than if you were to put a piece of channel down there or a clamp or something like that to hold it in place. Um, you know, we, we, I do channel on the bottom all the time because it's so easy to clean. You can just run a knife along the edge of, on the bottom and the side, you pull that silicone away and then redo it again. You can't do that with, uh, if you have silicone underneath the glass, how are you going to dig all that out? So it's a nightmare. Yeah, so you're I, my tune, uh, man. I mean, it's like, I, I always try to talk my customers out of silicone. Guys here yeah. know that, they laugh at me, but you know, I, I think that's a big thing. It's like, you have to really find your voice as an expert when you're dealing with people. And sometimes you really have to put your foot down and, um, and be willing to kind of just walk away from the sale if you have to, in order to do it the right way, you know? And, and, uh, and that's hard yeah. to do sometimes, but as time goes by and as you get a little bit more seasoned, it gets easier and easier to be like, hey, look, you know, we're, we're not going to do it that way. It does get easier, I've noticed too, but my favorite is you'll find somebody to do it. That's what I tell people. You'll find somebody to do it, but it just won't be us, you know, from a safety standpoint. You know, it's just not worth it. No, I do the same thing. I won't do it, but if you make enough phone calls, you'll find somebody to do it. what you want. You know, there's a saying out there, some of the best jobs are the ones you walk away from. Mm -hmm. It's just yeah. because of that, just because of that. And they, they'll say, oh, I can get the guy down the street to do it. And yeah, that's probably the same guy that's going to put the hinges on backwards, the handle on upside down or the glass <laughs> upside down, the outer square is wrong. Could be the same guy. But it's not, it's not the professional. At the end of the day, they're going to come back and say, you're the professional. Even if I talked you into it, shouldn't have done it. And you're right. That's what his lawyer would say. Yep. To that point, we had we had a customer come back and apologize to us for going to, you know, somebody else in town on one of their installs recently. You know, our price was a little higher. They didn't want to go with, you know, the exact design that we suggested. They ended up going with someone else in town. And that the lady actually came back to our, uh, our inside sales and apologized to her because... <laughs> Uh, she found out what she was getting for the value she wanted to pay for in the design uh, mm -hmm. and why we charge more because we do a lot of design on the front end. There's a lot more communication. Uh, we ask for more information. So, so to that point, that's, that's my thing is volume. Volume takes care of a lot of this. And I know I, I'm, I'm very fortunate right now. Our volume's high. So if someone wants to step out outside of the design that we want to do completely or to a point that it's, you know, I don't think it's secure or smart then we'll just, we'll just tell them we may not be the ones to do their job. Um, so. Yeah. You Before know I, oh, go ahead, Keith. How you doing, Keith? What's up? If you were doing better, it'd be a sin, right? Any better be a sin, baby. <laughs> Before I, cause I'm still, I do this all, I mean, every day. I hear this cause most of our competition will put like one clamp on the side, nothing on the bottom. But down here, typically the top of the still, and depending on how those are installed, if that's just caulked down there, once the effervescence, if it's not sealed properly, comes through, that caulk joint will literally stay to the glass with like two fins off it and just come loose. <clears throat> so what I tell a customer when they come in and say, you know, we don't, they don't know anything about frameless doors. So we have to recognize that. Like, this is all we do. So it's just seems like breathing to us you got to put something on there but they saw a picture somewhere or their friend had it from a guy working out of his garage which doesn't make it right and to try and preserve their autonomy before i walk away which i'd be willing to do i say to them obviously you want to do a frameless glass door because you want to showcase all your tile and so aesthetically less is more conversely how safe do you want this and I'll put the problem right back on them because they're more willing to capitulate with my ideas if they think it's their idea. So when I say, you know, how, you know, who's using this? Well, yes, my wife or my kids. Okay. You know, 
how safe do you want this? And kind of with deferential voice. And the first thing, well, what do you mean how safe? Well, you know, by taking those clips off, aesthetically it's less, but you're giving away all of your security. I mean, we typically wouldn't install something like that. Like if this was my mother's shower, there's no way I would do that. And you'd be surprised what they'd be willing to keep. Yeah, put the channel down there, put the clip on the side. We're good with that. And then I'll start rolling why that's so much better. Still on it's not perfect you know i know your husband did it but it wasn't perfect <laughs> and so instead of just being brash and telling you know we don't do that you want to use the other guy go ahead you know i'll save that for the very very end but usually when you say how safe do you want this it makes them stop and think for a second like no, no one's ever told me no i don't give a shit um do as cheap as possible they always want something safety is not a factor <laughs> And price. It's, price yeah, as soon safe. as they stop and like, is that on? I'm not wearing anything typically, and I want to be as safe as possible. And so that it'll usually walk into either a clamp or channel at that point every time. Another thing I say is that um, I would what I would and would not put in my own house, and they like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's excellent. Yeah, you know, it's funny when people start talking about like this minimalist hardware thing, my mind always goes to um, the old, like the UV glue hardware. Do you remember that? How like for a while they had like UV glue hinges. And I thought, wow, man, I can't imagine trusting a hinge on a shower door to like, ultraviolet glue. I they, still question the suction cups, let alone the ultraviolet glue. Right? <laughs> so needless to say, I never tried that, but heard anything about that? I, I've never even heard of that. I didn't know that was a thing. People actually just glued hinges to the glass. They yeah, I, mean, I don't never. know if anybody was doing it, but they, they were manufacturing parts like that, that were just smooth. You put use some UV glue on there, and uh, stuff's wow. really super strong. I mean, it's it's strong enough to do it, but I mean, yeah, I don't know how how I could trust it. I've seen Still them on cabinet them doors, but like I can't them. imagine showers. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, cabinet door. Yeah, that's even that's a little bit sketchy, but <laughs> shower door is like out of the question. And Does I, anybody hear UV glue glass like on a ninety degree? corner or something like that do you guys uv glue glass together or just all silicone does anyone do that the only uv we did was a, when when we before we honed our business model we did a little bit of uv we countertop we did a glass countertop with some uv um you know angular posts and it was just very labor intensive i mean it was beautiful when it was done something you'd show off but again you didn't make any money on it so back same to here showers. same here <laughs> same job yeah, <laughs> that was a one and done. -er. Yep, beautiful. Yeah, it sounds like oh, how easy is that going to be? Just put a little glue on there, and you know, but really, it has to be absolutely immaculately clean. You can't have anything in there, or it will, or it the stuff just won't hold. I mean, if you get it perfectly clean, the stuff holds like nobody's business. You can stand on it, but. To just send someone out and say, okay, here's some glue and here's some instructions. And like, yeah, go ahead and put that together. I, I wouldn't feel comfortable doing that. And the guy goes out there and he forgets his UV light. So he goes to get a little flashlight. He's trying to do it at UV flashlight. <laughs> like, that's, that's not going to work. <laughs> Sunshine's great if you can just drag it all outside. Yeah, right. <laughs> cut off mirrors and reflect it from two rooms away. <laughs> Now, when I first started out doing this, I, that's how I was taught was use UV glue on the corner, like a 90 degree, 90 degree corner on the glass. And I did it for a little while until I had to take one apart one time. Because <laughs> the, 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 the shower, the tile was a very bad job. So they had to redo all the tile. So they wanted me to pull the glass apart. And I didn't know how I was going to get that apart. It all came apart, but the glass was ruined. Like yeah. it really helped. But no, I, I would never do it again. It's all silicone now, just for that reason. What if the off chance we have to take it apart for some reason? <clears throat> so, no, I don't do that anymore. 
Throw a blanket over it, smash it, start over, right? Well, that's what I told them. I said, if I, I just took a knife, an exacto knife, and just kind of tapped it down the corner. Yeah. Until it kind of just popped. And, you know, one glass was stuck to the other glass and it just came out in pieces, but it didn't shatter. But uh, I did tell them that, well, we, we might have to just smash this out. I, I don't know how this is going to come apart. <laughs> Hey, Chris, in the chat there, Dana sent one in. It was pretty good. Yeah, I noticed that. Yeah, Dana's kind of, um, actually, he, he's kind of watching us in the, um, on Facebook and posting comments in the Facebook chat. So I'm copying them, pasting them into uh, ah. Zoom call. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, but yeah, he, he's got a couple. One, you know, the first one is just... Um, uh checking the floor outside and on a zero entry you know uh shower enclosure it's like make sure that the the floor isn't you know running uphill and that the door's not going to crash into it or the sweep binding on it if you're using a sweep right. yeah 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 which is a good I one i got bit by that one big time that. one time yeah that was not a not a good day there's another conversation that we have uh, and i know you every one of you have seen it but we have a door opening and next to it is like a, a pony wall or a buttress wall. And they've got a granite cap on it or some type of cap that overhangs anywhere from three sixteenths or, or more. And mm -hmm. they want a frameless door with a, you know, inline panel on that buttress wall. And, and obviously some, most times you can't shave down the grant, the end of the granite cap to, to make that flush, you know, coming up the pony wall. So now you're dealing with a gap that, that oftentimes approaches a half inch, uh, you know, if not more. And so that's another interesting conversation. How, how big you is your door open? Gap. How big would it, the door opening be where you could make that a notched panel? Well, that's what I'm saying. Uh, uh, in those tweener situations, like if you got a door that opening is 29 inches, sure. you know, you're not going to, I don't, I'm not a big fan of putting a 24 inch door and have a little icicle hanging there, you know, notched up over, but um I measured one actually today. Uh, the doors opening was like 20, 27 and, you know, 13, 16, but you have this three 16 inch gap. You're almost, um, you're scratching your head a little bit. I already scratched all my hair off. So, uh, oh, Mike, so what we do, what we do in those situations is again, if it's, let's say it's a door between two buttress walls and that overhangs three 16 well, well, we'll get the glass right to the end of that cap. We'll get the door with its normal gap, but below that countertop, there's obviously going to be a larger gap. The alternative is they can have the cap pulled, trimmed down on the wall side and reset it. And of course, oh no, it took forever to get the guy to come out here. Oh, the tile guy's never coming back again, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Then they know the gap underneath the countertop, mm -hmm. because if you notch the glass door, it looks terrible, even with a nice clean water jet notch or a CNC notch. So, and usually they understand there's a little gap underneath and they're not shocked when they see it. Yeah. I've, I've, I've just resolved that what we need to do on our, our end is to utilize, take pictures of everything we do, whether you think it's a good photograph mm -hmm. or not, but take pictures mm -hmm. of everything we do, mm -hmm. put it in a, in a portfolio so that when you go out to these sites, and let's face it, the majority of them, you know, it's wall to wall, you know, maybe it's a wall and a, and a bunch of swan line, and be able to point out these little nuances when they occur and say, this is what you're looking at. Um, we have to do a better mm -hmm. job at that. But in, in my mind, I'm thinking that I can draw pictures, but I think a, a real picture of a door in place will answer a lot of the questions or concerns that they might be having. So You should be yeah. taking a video at these places, posting that online yeah. for sure, dude, for sure. Yeah. Then you become the professional. I need you to come to West Virginia and video. You're, you're the, you're the video. <laughs> king. <laughs> we can do that. <laughs> Come on up. Don't tempt him. <laughs> yeah. We we take photos of job sites when we measure them because the uh, measuring techs are not the installers and those go into a Dropbox folder. So the, the techs before they go out, they can review the folder and, and we put some paper ones in, but also they can go, they have access to all the job site photos from their iPhones or iPads and can see the job site photos before they get there. Mm, just I like started that. doing that as well. That's a great idea. Mm. The, the additional benefit of that, Greg, is if there was a chip pile before your guys even got there, you know, you can see that they said, oh, no, your guy did this, and a scratch yep. cabinet or something, and you've got pictures of it before you even started. 
That's yep. huge. And, and that is huge from a standpoint because, you know, they don't know that you get some that you think, well, they're just trying to blame us. But there's some genuinely go, well, I didn't see it until your guy showed up. And so our guys, we actually have them look around and take pictures and tell the customer if they see a crack in the curb or a crack in one of the tiles on the floor. So for that very mm-hmm. reason, and if we crack something, we just fess up, you know, yeah. and we take care of it. We do the same. We take pictures yeah. at every estimate we do. Everybody's uh, doing it now. For the, that's good for the installers. I know that before I go there, if I know what I'm getting into, I'm already kind of getting in the mindset of what I need to do, what I need to attack when you get there. I think every yeah. installer should see what they're getting into before they get there. If they're going to perform at the highest level. Absolutely. I've got a friend that just started his own business uh, just part time right now, but he does like rendering drawings. So I had a customer that had a, I installed some glass in his bathroom, but now he wants to hang a barn style door from the ceiling down and have these like long 24 inch long posts coming, hanging down with this bar on the ceiling. I said, well, it's going to look silly. So I had my friend do up a rendering drawing of exactly what it'll look like paid $150 for this. And I showed it to the customers and he emailed me back and says, you're right, it looks stupid. What else you got? And I'll pay the $150 for you. So <laughs> <laughs> so uh, doing something like that, pictures or, or this uh, is a great idea. <laughs> we also have a lot of customers that will contact us by email or when we're having a conversation on the phone um, they will send us pictures in so we can look at the pictures before we even go out a lot of times. And so then we can give that information to the estimator before he goes, he gets a little heads up on what he's going to see when he gets there. So that helps also. And then he takes his own pictures of any issues that we know, because usually he's the one that's going to install it. And most of the time they remember, but sometimes they don't. So lots of notes and pictures are very helpful. And I like that having customers send you pictures ahead of time because it allows you to pre-qualify get it because lots of times it'll be like, how much is like a five foot shower? And then in your head, you know what the number is. And then you get a picture and there's a, a half wall with a return and nothing like what they described on the phone. So get that picture. Most of them don't know what they're talking about. They don't know the terminology. And so it's our job to educate them. And once we can actually see what it is they're talking about, then it helps us help them. Mm-hmm. Can I throw another one out for you? I know I've been talking a lot tonight, but I do, I do find this interesting is, say you have a l- rather large opening where you have maybe a 60 inch wide uh, uh, opening in front and then there's a return. And these people going back to that theme of minimal hardware, they don't want a header. <laughs> what about that deflection that you're seeing in that inline panel? I've had people, you know, adamant, no header. So we'll put maybe some clamps or sleeve over and then they want... They want, uh, uh, you, know, you put a hard H vinyl on there and that door hits that vinyl and the thing kind of wobbles back and forth. And then they call you and say, oh, I'm afraid this thing's going to fall out. There's this deflection. I mean, I've taken, that's a that's a, a, a common conversation I have with them describing deflection uh, in that panel when they don't want um, headers. But I'm just curious if you all have that conversation as well. Why is there an H? Right. Why is there an H seal on the door? Well, some panel. People, so we, we put it and I go, maybe uh, I add it and tell them it's a compression fit. If, if, you know, if you want the door to swing both ways, you can simply take it off. Uh, they get, they get nervous about the thing leaking is the main reason. And you need, and, I would stop putting those on. We, we've done, I know we don't have bills numbers, bills, done, bill and Keith done like 10, 10 million showers. We've done about 13,000 showers, I could probably count on less than one hand how many H seals we have on the doors. Why is that? If you don't mind me asking, I mean, I, all of our, we've always in my region for the 15 years I've been in the industry have installed H strikes on every shower we've sold, installed. I mean, I, it it's doesn't, always, it, go ahead. it's always in my opinion to help keep the water inside of the unit. Obviously, they're not leak proof and we know we all know no. that. But I mean, we always tell the customer they can pull it off, but it's always a service call that we get called back to, to put on if we don't put it on. Hmm. No, never done. Well, for ours, it's, the, it's, it's leaking if the curb is not properly pitched, but when the water goes, unless somebody sprays right at it, right. any water that splashes off of them hits the glass, clings. It doesn't magically leap through right. the thing. We found it'll cling to the glass, go down the curb. And if too much water accumulates and there's not enough pitch, 
out it goes. So we'll put damn strips down when we have that situation. But otherwise, again, I'm, you know, I think it's creating a problem. Maybe it works for you. I don't mean to be harsh, but we just don't put seals on anything. I I never put them on and we don't have service calls because there's never been a service call where an H seal has fixed a water problem. Let me say it that way. (laughs) That's true. But in my opinion, it's always, I'd rather put that $5 piece on then send the guys back, you know, at the cost of the truck and the operating costs and all that. I'd rather than just put it on and let it be. That's, that's just my opinion. Okay. We sell in swing a lot. So the in swing is a big feature. We sell that. You can pull the door in, grab a towel off a hook, close the door inside, stay in the shower, dry off where it's nice and warm and you haven't drip water all over the floor. So, and that, that's the sales pitch we've used and it works. But I always tell my customer that I don't fix leaks. I don't have yet. I mean, the fact of the matter is if it's not leaking, then uh, uh, any kind of poly on the door is going to distract from the aesthetics of the door, which is why they wanted a frameless door in the first place. And so I I just do what I can to make sure it's not going to quote unquote leak. And I define what a leak means. Uh, A leak means puddles, not drips. If we have puddles and I have a leak to fix, but there's no sense in fixing a leak that we don't have yet. I actually got to use Chris's uh, uh, scene from a couple of weeks ago there. So I'm not installing an aquarium here. So <laughs> <laughs> the customer's like, okay, well, you're right. I'm not putting an aquarium. It's not going to hold water. This is, this is, this is, looks good. It, it's, it's may leak if you took a shower head, pointed right at the glass, but regular showering, it's not going to leak. It's going to uh, contain and, yeah. the water. Right. I mean, yeah. if, if, if something isn't designed to be watertight, then it really can't leak, can it? I mean, like, can a screen door leak? You know, <laughs> can like a strainer leak? I mean, well, it's not designed. If, if it's a bowl and, and, and water comes out of it out the bottom, then that's a leak, you know. But if it's a semantics and water <laughs> comes out the bottom, then it's not really. It's not really leaking. And I, I get what, you know, what Shane's saying, you know, it's like, that's kind of my policy about um, bottom sweeps, you know, and bottom sweeps on doors. It's like the one like plastic that I will almost always leave on a, on a frame of shower door is that bottom sweep, mm-hmm. because it takes about as much time to explain to somebody why they don't need that bottom sweep on their door as it does to like, Put the bottom sweep on the door and it's just yeah, it's a few bots and um and uh and it's easy enough to where to say hey you know you may not need that you can pull it off if you don't and you know people will often ask um what will it leak you know and it's like i i you know i can't really answer that question it's like like brian is saying like um, I don't know. We can't really address a problem that we haven't we haven't had yet. And um, the truth is, there's so many variables. It's like, wh- well, how much water pressure do you have? Who's going to be using it? Is it going to be a child? Is it going to be an elderly person? Um, is the shower head pointed right at the gap in the glass? Um, <laughs> you know, you know, there are so many variables. There's really no way to say what how much water is going to be contained. But it's amazing. Sometimes um, these frameless shower doors, they hold all the water. No water at all gets out. Um, so that can happen. I'd say the two things on leaks, I'm still shocked that tile guys are not putting pitches on curbs uh, 10, 12, 15, 20, 30 years into frameless. And the other thing that we're seeing on the, on the curbless stuff is the fall line is in the wrong place for for curbless showers they put it either on the inside or they they want the glass right right on the transition tile from the bathroom to the small tile that goes into the shower and of course any water that gets past that fall line is never coming back and trying to tell customers that they need that fall line to start just like a regular curb two to three inches outside the glass so that it has slope to come back towards the drain uh, is an education process that is extremely difficult to get through um, to tile guys. We've actually put together, we haven't got it done yet, but we're putting together a program to meet with tile guys and to show them where that curbless fall line needs to be when they have curbs, what the pitch needs to be, what's the correct pitch, et cetera. Cause it's still frustrating. I mean, um, it's amazing that we're still running into it. 
Yeah, that's a good idea to have the tile guy conversation. I was going to mention earlier when we were talking about, um, you know, getting information ahead of time before we go out to do the measure. Um, I've tried tried we we have lots and lots of contractor customers probably 70 percent and you know i've told every one of them send me your plans in advance we'll discuss the entire shower layout and so often we'll we'll change the whole shower design before they even start demo it's so much better i love getting in front of those people and getting in front of the tile people is is another great step that i want to go after Good idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. If you can, I mean, you don't always get the opportunity to yeah. um, to do it. And I think there's a there's a whole industry um, if you could figure out how to market it of just doing consultations before people, you know, do their. I I, I did a little video, put it out, you know, on my YouTube channel saying, "Hey, hire me to come and you know troubleshoot this before you do." Your, mm -hmm. your your remodel because you know we can we can give you some advice on how to structure your whole bathroom to make your shower door work you know optimally you know and uh yeah i think you know you know 100 bucks 200 bucks depending on your market you know it would be a real value to somebody to, to have that, that kind i think of the key what we're going to attempt to do is you get these custom tile shops, not your box stores per se. And they have a lot of high end jobs and those tile guys do want to learn and do want to know more. And so those are the guys that we're going to try to get in front of. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a good idea. I've had, con I've had contractors call and I had this one guy call and he said, I'm getting ready to do a Neo angle shower. I don't do very many of these. What do I need to know? Like, oh, nice. thank you. I spent like an hour on the phone with him, just everything I can think of, but I'll do it every day. Thanks for asking. There's so much you need to know about that. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a short conversation. Don't do a Neo angle shower. <laughs> why? Yeah. Why are you even attempting it? <laughs> what were you going to say, uh, Billy Britt? Key point that you made a few weeks ago that I have let stick in my head is asking customers because we all get the call about leaking showers. Every one of us gets that call. Um, so you made the comment a few weeks ago and it was kind of during your abrasive, uh, I don't silicone showers discussion um, that you, you ask customers, okay, so you're abrasive. telling me that you're getting water <laughs> abrasive to me, guy who uses silicone constantly. Um, are you, so you're getting water out of your, your, shower onto your waterproof surface uh that's waterproof so that's what you're telling me and and that just stuck in my head so you know we're getting calls constantly over well my shower's leaking and i'm going okay oh no your shower is your shower's pouring water out into your bathroom and they go well no it's just we just got a little water out on the curb you know it's leaking around the clip a little bit or it's it's dripping off the door and i'm like so you're saying that your non-water tight shower is getting a little bit of water out onto your waterproof curb or your waterproof tile in your bathroom. And they're like, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So I'll repeat it to them again. So you're telling me you're getting a little bit of drips and a little bit of water out on your tile that's made to hold a little bit of water without any concern. So what are we so concerned about? And it's kind of like a, a light bulb going off for some of these customers where they're thinking, oh, you're kind of right. Like, I've got a little water sitting on the outside of my curb, not really that big of a deal. So now if water's pouring out, then yes, we've got a pitch issue. We've got a bigger issue going on that wasn't caught ahead of time. We've got to try to help with that as much as we can, but hopefully we caught it beforehand. But it's, it's something that just stuck with me a few weeks ago, especially when you're talking like throwing H strikes on and throwing extra poly on and, you know, using silicone all the time, you know, it was kind of, for me, it was like a, a dawning on me that, you know, maybe I've been thinking about this the wrong way where, yeah, I say they're not watertight, but then I go back stressing about trying to make something watertight. That's not watertight, you know, and getting a little bit of water out, really not that big of a deal. You know, if, if it's pouring out, that's different. You got wood floors. That's different. We needed to address that on the front end with a dam or some kind of, you know, semi frameless shower. But that's something to keep in mind when you're talking about, well, we want to, we want to help the customer make this watertight. Well, it's not. So stop stressing yourself about it. 
And that's kind of a, a, a switch we've made recently. I made everybody in the office watch that Zoom call a few weeks ago afterwards. I made them go back and watch it because it was it was an epiphany to me. Like I'm stressing constantly, like this person has a leaky clip. Like we've got to rush back over there and make them happy. And so the how problem- you get away with that though? The customer just and accepts it and you never hear from them again? No, we don't ignore them. What we do is we turn down the volume on how dire and how how worrisome it is so that they're not thinking, oh gosh, I'm, my bathroom is going to be ruined because right. we have a clip that's customer dripping some water out of my curb. That was arc. I mean, yeah, if there's <laughs> right. a miracle. You know, I need an arc. Come quickly. You know, I mean, it's it's the end of the world and we have to address it. So I, yeah, that's interesting to me that you can do that and they just accept it. And because I don't know, that wouldn't work for us or I've never tried it, but I guess it's, a, <laughs> it we do. Work. It work. If you've <laughs> never tried something, how do you know if it works or not? Right. You know, what's when funny? we, uh, go ahead. what's funny about this is Billy, I mean, you're getting it, you're getting it. And it, there's a yeah. little bit of a paradigm shift that has to happen. And it's a little bit tricky. And it's one thing to say, hey, frameless shower doors really aren't watertight. But then it's another thing to believe it. <laughs> and, to, and to stand with conviction on the fact that frameless shower enclosures are not watertight. You know, I mean, it's one thing to say it. And then when, and then, yeah, when the customer comes like, you know, with their hair on fire, oh no, you know, some water's dripping out. It's like, it's easy to get sucked into that and be go into that emo, emotional place with them. But if you don't, and it, a really similar thing to this steam showers. You know, people think, we'll go, what if some steam gets out? It's like, yeah. Yeah, a little steam yeah. will get out, you yeah. know? And it's yeah. like, but the vast majority of that steam is going to stay in there. But, you know, a little bit of steam getting out isn't going to ruin your steam shower. It's not going to ruin your experience. It's not going to ruin your bathroom. I mean, if you're, because your bathroom's built, you know, been built for a steam shower. That's the same exact conversation. And it's weird. It's like, what if you spilled a glass of water on your, on your bathroom floor? Would you freak out? No. Yeah. Well, then why are you freaking out about this? You can't say it that way, right? You have to be, right. I mean, I love the way Bill, uh, Billy is approaching it. But but my, my question is if you're putting silicone, uh, between the glass and the tile and a, a, around the, the clip, whatever. Uh, mm-hmm. And it's got water dripping through it. Then you're, you're talking about two different things because you put silicone so it wouldn't leak, but now it's dripping through the silicone. So you have a leak. You follow my logic there. So I, I guess the way I, I'm thinking of is if I put silicone down, it shouldn't have water dripping through it right and that's what we do we warranty that as well the main issue we've run into of course is curbs that are a level uh, or have no pitch or pitch out right. and we we now send out with quotes if if we believe the shower is going to leak and after so many times you know it's going to when i say leak under the door not in a silicone environment we say that is not a warranty item and we say that before we sell them a shower and that we require a damn strip um, or they can just have the, the leaks and not worry about it. But I'm with you, Brian. If it's leaking outside of a clamp or if it's leaking where we silicone, that is a warranty item. Yeah. So Brian, Brian, let me put a little bit of thought behind this and, and give this some thought. So water has a property, and they call it the property of attachment, right? So water you spray on the glass, it attaches to the glass, runs down and finds its, its exit point. Sometimes caulking isn't necessarily to stop a leak, but it's to direct the water where you want it to go. Mm-hmm. Now, mm-hmm. what I'm saying is sometimes that water will get on a glass, attach to the clamp, work its way around. And then if the pitch is just not right, it's attached to the clamp and it just drips out. So sometimes some silicone there isn't really to make it watertight, but it's to redirect or to let the water attach to the silicone and find its way where you want to direct it. So, but, so you're saying you want the silicone to direct the water through the some, clamp onto the outside? That, in, I don't no, not that. to the outside. Not to the outside. Okay. Sometimes you put it where you want it to go. All I'm saying is just because someone uses silicone doesn't mean they're make, trying to make it watertight. I guess that I was see. the point I was saying. Mm-hmm. Now, okay. 
it could be that they're trying to direct it and it failed and it's going outside and they need to gotcha. redirect it. All I'm saying is because they use silicone doesn't mean they're trying to make it watertight. Mm -hmm. yeah. that, does point. that make sense? Right. Yeah. Right, but you can try to make it watertight if you want. You can. I mean, no, don't, no, don't let me talk you out of that. Right. But it's like, but I'm telling my customers right from the, the very beginning not to expect it to be watertight. And it's yeah. like, it, it'd be easier for me to teach, tell my customers that if everybody else was on the same page with me. But there, I mean, <laughs> I, I understand everybody's not. But it's like, but my customers get it. I mean, we just have a little conversation. And at the beginning, you know, people have, it's bigger in their mind. They think, oh, wow, so water's going to get on my floor. It's like, yeah, well, they make bath mats. You know, they make bath mats for that exact reason. So that's like, you know, so that you can put it on the floor in front of your shower, right? Right. But, and, and once I have that conversation with them, they get it. They're like, oh, yeah. And it's funny to see the expression on their face. They're like, oh, yeah, I mean, right. What am I? They come to, they come to an epiphany themselves, you know. Um, but what, I mean, do you, what do people do if, if you drill the hole into the curb and you don't want water to go into that hole down into the waterproofing or wherever it is and expand whatever's underneath there and then damage that curb or, or cause damage underneath. Now, that, that's, now, now you're trying to make water types. That's a leak. <laughs> yeah, that what you're describing is a leak. That but is something that we are responsible for. Right. But you don't know that for years later. Yeah. Well, not necessarily. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the shower's not, if the curb isn't built properly, if some idiot has used two by fours and didn't yeah. wrap it with something, that, that's, that would have looked in, 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 a, in a few weeks and then just wreck everything else. Mm -hmm. But, you know, siliconing the bottom at the very least of what you are trying to make watertight, because you don't want water to get to the holes that you drilled, not necessarily going outside of the shower but you just are preventing water from going to any hole you put into the bottom where water can collect. You mm -hmm. don't need to put hole of silicone on the walls because the water's just gonna run down. Mm -hmm. But on the curb, especially, or on any bench or anything like that, you're, you're making that water tight, you have to. Um, we're using Curdy Fix on all curb applications in order to keep the warranty. Is anybody else doing that? Some of the Schluter guys and the Curdy guys saying you have to use the Curdy fix on anything that penetrates the membrane in order to maintain the warranty. They explain the Curdy fix. That's something I haven't heard of. Yeah. Mm. Uh, instead of silicone, the Curdy fix is a um, it's whatever their whatever their waterproof silicone type material. I don't know what it's made of, oh. but it's the official Schluter product. So that when you break the membrane by drilling into the curb in order to maintain, and this is what they've told me, the, the Curdy and Schluter guys, is that in order to maintain the warranty, you've got to use the Curdy fix material. It's a lot more expensive than silicone, uh, but a lot better. And so we use those on all horizontal applications so that we don't run into those curb situations where it swells up and water damage, et cetera, et cetera. So- um, You're talking about nobody, shooting it inside of the hole whenever, you, yep. after the drilling process, so down right. into the curb? Okay. Yep. I have not heard of that either. I haven't I mean, heard why, of it. Why I mean, obviously than, we do with silicone, but I have not heard of that. Curtis. Why is it better than the silicone? It's the officially sanctioned product that will from them, maintain, from them. right, to maintain yeah. the warranty. Yeah, that it's makes sense. like it's a million dollar product. It <laughs> feels like you're spending a million dollars, but it's, it's, a, it's a higher quality product for sure. So Greg, who's yeah. maintaining that warranty? You? Like, are you taking responsibility for maintaining that warranty since you're penetrating it? Well, no, the warranty that Schluter is saying, if you want to, if the customer wants to keep the Schluter warranty, if you penetrate that, it's got to be Curdy Fix has got to be in those holes. So is it the tile installer or the homeowner or who's, who's giving you that information so that you are prepared for that application? Uh, well, the Schluter reps have told us this. Yeah, but so are, you asking, are you asking the, the installer, the tile installer, the homeowner on every measure? Well, we just, no, we, just put, we just, we use it on every single one of them. Okay. Um, it's better anyway. It's a higher quality and you're not using it everywhere. So you're not going through 700 tubes of it because it is pricey. I'm intrigued. I mean, if that's, you know, if this is a superior way to waterproof uh, penetrations, man, I, K I know more. K-E-R-D-I fix. Yes. Yeah. On I really question whether Schluter or whatever would actually hold up on the warranty 
by using this product, if something was to leak, they would just say, well, you didn't use it properly then. I'd be surprised that they would even con continue with it's that work at that point. It's certainly possible. We've been using it now for three, four or five years. And we just don't have issues. You purchase it directly from Schluter? Oh, just from the tile wholesaler. And like, so how expensive is it to do that stuff? I, do, I just write the checks, Chris. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> how many zeros, Chris? Yeah. Right? <laughs> how many zeros just, on the end of that check? <laughs> <laughs> they give me a look like, whoa, that stuff's expensive. So, but it's, right. I mean, it's, it comes in a regular caulking tube. So my guess is two, three, four times expensive, be my guess. Yeah. So mm -hmm. Kirby Fix. Mm -hmm. Like K I R T I. K E R D I. Oh, fix. K E R D I. Fix. Well, thanks for sharing that one, Greg. Mm -hmm. Thanks for sharing. That's good. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, you know, because that is now, that is the issue. You know, leaking in a shower door installation really is water leaking into the curb, into the yeah. walls, into the tile. Yeah. I mean, it's like water leaking out. Water getting out of the shower onto the tile is not really a leak, in my thinking. But like sure. water pen getting into the penetrations, yes, that's mm -hmm. that's a leak, and that's what we want to prevent. How because are you guys handling? How are you guys handling heated floors, curbless <laughs> heated floors? Run, <laughs> running away from. <laughs> <laughs> We've been using the little thermal guns. Yeah, bring a heat gun during install. During yeah. measure. Yeah. You mean a camera, oh. right? Uh, yeah. A camera. Mm -hmm. No, just a little, you know, like these little thermal, they're like a little laser dot. And yeah, when you're measuring. That. I tried that, but it wasn't, I mean, once the floor heats up, it's all the same temperature. Yeah, you got to do it, I think, while they're there. That's what my guys are doing. Or obviously, sometimes they'll measure and take pictures, but that's pretty bad because, oh, the tile wasn't in. So you don't know exactly where the wire is compared to where your clamps are going to go, etc. So we try to minimize the clamps, use the heat gun and um, mark it off and then keep the clamps away from those locations. Yeah, there's a camera um, or an app or something you can get for your phone. I, I think it's a couple hundred bucks. Okay. Um, and I'm not sure if it's a camera, an attachment. Anybody know about that? Mm -mm. Mm. You can buy one of those heat guns or something like that at Home Depot. Yep. It's a thermal, it's a thermal gun. Yeah. It shows you where the wires are as it heats up. So it gives you a, a, a fairly good idea where the wires are for an accurate measurement within, you know, a quarter of an inch. I, I wouldn't recommend it, but it'll, it'll be very close. Yep. Keeps you out of trouble, especially if you yeah. mark off where you think your hardware is going to go, then turn it on and shoot it. You can always move a clamp over a half an inch or whatever. Yeah. You can but rent it too. We haven't bought one yet. Yeah, you can rent them. Yeah. By the way, I just looked up the price on uh Curdy fix. It's about 25 bucks a tube. Yep. Mm. You can get it at uh, Amazon, by the way. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> a tube probably lasts you a long time. A long time, and you buy it from your tile wholesaler by the case. So, well, for you, Chris, it'll last a few years. Oh, decades, <laughs> decades. I'll, 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 I'll retire and still have part of that case. <laughs> Better check the date code. Uh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, 25 bucks a tube. You get a lot of showers out of that. Yeah. So, we're, that. we're happy with I'm that. You get a tube. Yeah, I'm gonna get it too. I mean, that's that's great. You know, I mean, that's like I don't know. I use I normally use RTV, you know, and that's like probably twelve dollars too. So it's probably twice as much, you know. Um, but yeah, you know, every little bit, you know. We've been brought out on several um, several leaks where our glass is leaking, and our requirement is always, you know, we're gonna be on site. You know, we'll do the uninstall. We're going to inspect it with you every single time. It's been that they didn't have the waterproofing in the corner or they didn't, mm -hmm. you know, it's always. Or years later, you'll get the water. They'll say that it's our glass. Yeah, after five years, they'll get the water wicking through the, um, the uh, between the tiles. The and grout? They, like, through the grout. Thank the you. The grout will actually, it will, yeah. will wick water. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's 
it it's never us knock on wood it hasn't been us <laughs> and it's like come on guys you know you're just trying to blame the the top of this structure when really deep down you know we're we're the outside edge of all these different layers that can go wrong and you really think it's us come on <laughs> what are the odds it's always the shower guy mm-hmm. it's always the shower guy can't be trusted no mm-hmm. and I like told the customer that that once on a shower pan. Hey, now we're the shower door guy. Yeah, exactly. Right? <laughs> and Where the heck did that come from? Right. <laughs> Are you out on the town or what, Christina? Oh yeah, yeah. I, I think yeah. It's really late here. Is it's there a story to... behind that? No, <laughs> not a good one. Okay. Glad Is you're here. A... It's always good is to see Is that the name people. of the business, the shower door guy, Christina? Yeah. yeah that that's, is actually. That's the name of my business, too, the shower door guy. Wow. No Don't sue each other, okay? <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Well, franchise. Where are you located? Canada. So. Oh, uh, we get I, calls for you sometimes. <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, a, funny, a funny story. When I registered the name, the shower door guy, I got a call from a guy in uh, Alberta, another few provinces away from me. And he goes, you stole my name. I said, well, what do you mean? He goes, well, I went to register the shower door guy, but someone already took it, you. So now oh, he's yeah. called that shower door guy. <laughs> the other shower door guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like the original yeah. mattress factory or whatever. The alternative shower door guy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's funny. No, I'm the, the shower door guy. So are you in California? No, we are mm-hmm. in Atlanta, although there is a shower door guy in California who is yeah. very well established. And there's yeah, also a shower door guy, I believe, in Connecticut um, okay. as well, who's who's pretty well established as well. So yeah. none of us encroach on each other's territories at all, mm-hmm. but um, we sometimes get calls for each other. So. Oh, well, that's cool. Nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you too. What a good name. You never know who you'll run into on one of these calls. Yeah. I know. I don't well, usually I look like sorry yeah. for that. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> good stuff. Good stuff. Well, all right. Well, I think, you know, that's a good note to stop on. Um, let's go ahead and wrap it up. So couple of takeaways I, I got from tonight's call is like, one was just that taking photos when you go out to do a measure. I mean, I think that's a great idea. I mean, I'll normally take a photo um, just because, you know, I see so many sometimes it's hard for me to remember, you know, when I get back to my office, like which person is which or whatever, I'm sure you guys can relate. But um, I, I think I'm gonna start taking like a series of photos and it's great, you know, if there's, if you catch a little defect, like when I go to install, sometimes, you know, I'll notice, oh, look, there's a chip there, there's a crack there, and get a photo of it before I start working. So just in case later someone says, hey, you cracked my tile, be like, no, here's a photo of the crack before we started. But it'd be really smart to have those photos at the time of, of the measure. So that's my big takeaway. I'm sure there are like a dozen that you could, um, claim for your own so thanks for showing up everyone i hope to see you back here again next wednesday